and gentlemen, welcome back to the studio this evening. So, as you can tell, tonight I am painting a green machine. There it is. I'm using my Holbein paints. I don't normally use these. You normally see me with the M. Graham paints. Tonight I am using my Holbein paints in my Mead and Watercolor tin because of this one reason. I've got a black paint in this, and I like the black paint that's in the whole bind set, and so I'm going to be using that. Um, in addition to the whole bind paints that I'm using this evening, I'm also using my silver black velvet brushes. I've got four of them. They are all rounds, sized two, four, six, and eight. And the paper that I'm using. Uh, in this painting is Daler Rowney Aquafine paper. It's a wood pulp paper, 140 pound. You've probably seen me use this before if you've seen any of my videos. I got it from a giant pack of paper and cut it down myself so that I could get lots of smaller sheets of paper. Uh, the green that I'm using here is a Holbein green called, get this, Permanent green, number one. It's a wildly descriptive term, I know. Um, for anybody interested in it, it's P, uh, PY3 and PG7 mixed. It's a nice light yellowish green. And I've just painted the body of the, uh, the green machine here. And now mixing a little bit of black. Uh, looks like maybe just a touch of Prussian blue in that. And I'm going to go in and drop in, oh, some of the inserts in the wheel here. The indentations in the center of the wheel. These nice black areas. And then I'm going to come back in a little bit later and put in a, a bit of the shadowing in here. To really kind of give it a 3D look. But I gave you some base color on there first, and so that's what I am doing. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably noticed that I actually painted this picture, oh, midsummer sometime, late July, early August, and uh, I'm just getting around to editing a lot of the video footage that I have from over the summer, so you may see a number of paintings come up. Uh, that you have seen pictures for previously on Instagram or Twitter. And I apologize for the lateness of this, but it couldn't be helped too much. I've got a lot going on, or had a lot going on this summer, so I'll give a quick apology for that, but not uh, too apologetic because I do have a life outside of my art, and that was what keeps me and my family going. Uh, but... This whole summer I've been painting a series of paintings that have kind of reminded me of the things of my youth. And I'm not sure exactly where that started. I guess maybe it started when I painted the first popsicle that I did. And that brought back a whole flood of memories. And from there I just decided to uh, do lots of the things that I remember from my childhood. This is one of them. If you're, if you're curious, I never had a green machine. Uh, I had a friend who had a green machine, and uh, I had to go over and ride it at his house. I had a big wheel, and my big wheel was just destroyed when I was done with it. The front wheel uh, had been worn through. The whole front steering had come off. The back wheels were scraped and scratched to death. It was terrible. Okay, uh, but uh, enough of that. I'm darkening up a little bit, dropping in a few of the shadows. I may still go back. I think I'm going to have to go back and put in even a little bit darker shadow on here. But I've got a middle shadow, I guess you would call it, on here right now. And I darkened my green up with a little bit of Viridian in there. And uh, maybe I may have touched a little bit of the Prussian blue just to darken that up 
a little bit but as I'm looking at it here I may yet have to go back and put another layer of, uh, of dark on here but this will get me a nice start and as you can see there are some nice shadowing there's some nice shadowing developing on here already I don't want to cover over everything in here and at some point I'm gonna let you see the picture again <laughs> and you'll see exactly what I'm doing I've been working on that trying to figure out the best way to let you see what I'm looking at as I'm painting it uh, as I'm talking to you now which is as I said a month or so on since this paint or more than a month since I've actually done this painting I've figured out a way to superimpose the picture right in the video so I don't even have to worry about having it on my desk and trying to get it in frame I could just uh, I can just put it in digitally and you'll be able to see it for the whole painting okay I picked up a little liner brush right now this is a Grumbacher Academy liner brush you can see uh, if I move my fingers that the paint is all peeling off of this and it looks old and beat down that's because that brush is old and beat down I've had this brush for well the better part of a decade at least maybe longer but it still keeps working for me I don't see any need to replace this one so I just keep right on using it as you can see it does get a very fine line in there it's I can't even tell you what size it is I believe it's a size one but I don't really know because the part of the paint that I had the number on it has been chipped off okay moving on from there get a little ultramarine here mix that in with my uh, green paint looks like I'm dabbing in just a little bit of yellow trying to get it exactly right not go too dark not go too light but just going in to darken up a couple of these shadows here and there a little bit of maybe some sloppy brushmanship there but a dab of the cloth we'll get that right off yep a few uh, not all of the uh, the darks that I put on before need to be covered up but quite a few of them do especially in that wheel well it's very dark in there and under a bit of the strengthening of the frame back there I think that's gonna do that for us we can move on to something else now probably Uh, one thing that did make this painting a little bit easier than some I've done this is a fairly tight style of painting here and because I've drawn so many of the parts and pieces onto this it does make it a little bit easier uh, to paint it it's more paint by numbers and less loose um, and impressionistic uh, but I'm still trying to uh, give this a style of my own rather than have it just be a copy of, of what I see I don't certainly don't want to paint just a copy of something we have the original if we wanted to look at it so I'm hoping to give this a little bit of flair of my own as I'm going through here one of the places I can do this is the wheels right wheels are a dark black color but dark black is not the most interesting color so uh, hopefully I can paint these wheels a little bit differently well they're still going to be a, a dark color I am using the black watercolor but the even the black watercolor is a bit transparent it's not totally opaque and thankfully so uh, so it's going to allow for a little interpretation of what this wheel really looks like to me and here we can go uh, you can see me going in and doing putting in just the black of what would be rubber on a real wheel which is plastic on the green machine just dropping that in there this is kind of a critical place in here I want to keep the wheel light enough 
so that it doesn't totally run into the dark shadow inside that wheel well. But I've got to get it dark enough that it differentiates itself from the rest of the wheel, uh, meaning that hub that's on the inside. And so that will become important in a little bit. And after the wheels, the next thing I'm going to paint, of course, as you can see, is the seat. I'm going to do this the same way as I'm doing the wheels, just very loose, very quickly. If a little paint puddles in one place or another, I'm not going to sweat it too much. I'm going to call that the fun of painting with watercolors and let the water uh, do what it wants to do. And I'm just going to keep right on moving along. I should say the seat on this, it really is the least favorite thing on here that I had to paint. It really was hard looking in the picture. Um, it really was a big black blob, and I've kind of divided it into a couple of areas. All right, the seat base, then a little bit of the back, and maybe... I don't know what that top would be, some lumbar support or something like that. And I'm going to try to paint it uh, that way so you can see the difference in those three areas. Just to give that seat that would just be black plastic a bit more interest than it would normally have. All right, now the insides of the wheels with the fake inside the fake spokes. Uh, it really is funny how much plastic is on this bike and how much we're trying I'm trying to relate it to a real wheel um, but uh, inside the fake spokes I'm gonna paint a dark dark black as dark as I can get it uh, and that's gonna differentiate it from the uh, the tires that are on this which are gonna end up being much much lighter and uh, hopefully that will set it off in the end and everybody will be able to see exactly what I see when I look at these wheels there we go that's just about done back there you can see how the air in between the the spokes on the that rim are uh, are set apart from the black of the plastic of the wheel itself of the tire itself and I'm going to reload my black straight black here and I'm going to try to do the same thing on this big front wheel and here we go and I want this to be pretty dark pretty black um, I don't know I don't know if I put on multiple layers of black paint or whether it be Holbein's paint or uh, another manufacturer's black paint how opaque it would even be but uh, I want this to be fairly dark fairly opaque uh, would be would be nice for me on this one now, I did say that uh, that I never had a green machine I had a big wheel and if you've been following along with me on Instagram and Twitter you know that I have also painted a big wheel so expect to see that video coming out fairly shortly I promise it won't be several months until I get that one out I'll try to get it out more quickly my schedule is lightening up a little bit uh, here recently and hopefully we'll stay a bit lighter um, for the foreseeable future anyways maybe not for forever but for a little while and I'll be able to do some more videos and get those out to everybody right I'm just using a big number six brush or I'm sorry this is still a number eight brush that I'm using uh, this is the silver black velvet brush it comes to a fantastic point always comes to a fantastic point I see why everybody likes these brushes uh, they really are very nice and uh, so I've I, I said in other videos I've said in my live streams I've reluctantly come to like these I 
I tried them out. I didn't like them at first. Uh, I, I put them away in a bin and didn't take them out for months and just on a whim decided to give them another chance. And when I got them out the second time, I started to like them. So I totally understand why people like them and use them now and they are a staple on, uh, on my desk at this point. Uh, and I expect that they will be there for quite some time into the future. All right, just painting right around this wheel hub, this wheel axle maybe right here. Trying to get my darks in there and you can see how uh, now after all of the dark paint has gotten on this wheel that that tire takes on more of a life of its own as it's a little grayer, not quite as dark. Had I done the whole thing a dark black and made it uh, dark like the plastic really is, it would have lost a lot of fun and whimsy, I think, that's in that front tire and the back tires too. And, uh, and I didn't want to do that. I knew I didn't want to do that. I wanted to leave those a little lighter uh, to set them apart from that from the rim there. And hopefully I'm doing getting some of that same effect as I paint the seat here but at least as I paint the seat even if I don't get that same effect I've got a nice hard edge that separates these segments now I do need to come back and perhaps paint a shadow line onto these back wheels so that's what I'm attempting to do now and it doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to show that maybe there's a bit of roundness to that wheel. There it is, and you can see now that definitely part of that wheel is in shadow, it's underneath. And it really does add a bit of dimension to it. I'm going to do the same thing with the seat here. It's not just flat, it's got a bit of dimension to it also. So with a dark, dark color, because that edge probably is in a bit of shadow. There we go, we just drop that line on there. And immediately we've got a bit of dimension to our seat that plastic is now looks like it's a thick slab of plastic rather than a thin slab of plastic almost looks like it's able to hold a small child in that seat wouldn't that be something there we go all right let's take a quick look at this and see what we need to do next I think what we need to do is put a top shadow on and our wheels really going to look like it is round and just a bit on the side which would necessarily be in shadow not too much I again I don't want to take away from that light funness of the black the wateriness of it of course there's a bit more on the front wheel than there is on the back but I don't want to take too much away from that. Alright, looking good. Just a little dab of paint here and there. I have to say, it's been a while since I've seen this video or since I painted this. I didn't realize I put so much time and effort <laughs> into this little tiny rear wheel back there but there it is looking pretty nice let's see I think I do go back and I was gonna say I thought I went back and did a little bit on the seats okay I'm painting in some of the shadows on this wheel to try and give it dimension it's a it's thicker in the center and thins down as it gets to the tire with the, the faux rubber of the tire 
just painting in again a little bit of dark maybe I've got a little bit of uh, Prussian blue mixed in with that to keep it uh, a bit of the same of that silver color if I was using a different set of paints I would mix in a little bit of turquoise in with that black or, or a dark gray to make that metallic color but in here I used Prussian blue there we go we've got some fake bolts that need a bit of color on them to make those look real-ish <laughs> put those on and if we're gonna have a shadow on everything else we might as well have them on the ball that you hold on to to steer this thing with there we go all right we've got a few things left to go here we've got our steering mechanism and we've got a pedal that we need to do the steering mechanism looks like it's black so we've got to figure a way to do that without whoop I'm trying to get a little bit more detail in the seat there I guess just a little bit I'm trying to make it look like instead of being flat uh, that there's a bit of a cup in the middle of it that you would sit in I don't know how successfully I'm doing that. There we go. That's starting to look a little better. And maybe if I carry that line across, I'll see uh, that it helps a bit. But I do have to be careful because though that steering mechanism, those are black also. And so if I, if I paint too close to them, then... Uh, they're going to be more difficult to see when I make those black. But there we go. Uh, now that adds a bit of dimension to that seat. Makes it look maybe like there's a bit of a cup in the center of it. And that inner panel that's in there can make that just a bit darker to set it off from everything else there aren't a whole lot of colors I used in this painting permanent green number one maybe a touch of permanent green number two a bit of viridian black and Prussian blue and little little else very little else went into this painting uh, it's amazing that you can paint this whole thing with only those few colors and we're going to end up with what I think is a knockout painting. Of course, it's a painting of my, something from my childhood, so I'm going to like it quite a bit. And, well, I am the artist, so I hope I like it a little bit. Uh, but there we go. Got some, got some more dimension on there. All right, I'm mixing up a little bit of... No, oh, I'm mixing up just straight black, it looks like. thought I was going to do that little washer that's on side of that and here's where I need to be a little delicate because the seat is black the shifter the steering mechanism is black and I don't want the two necessarily to run together I've got to make sure that there's a difference between those you can make one darker or one lighter however it's going to come out that's how it's going to be but if I don't do it that way they're going to blend together and it won't turn out quite as nicely. Looks as though I'm going for a little darker black than everything else. Oh, even the petals are black. I'd forgotten the petals were black. They are, of course, blue on the big wheel. Which was, of course, the one I had there we go and uh, just gonna finish this up there's really not much more to this painting a couple of more minutes gonna paint the steering mechanism and then a few extra details and that is going to be about it I should say that as I'm using these Holbein paints, 
I am uh, recognizing that I really do like the M. Graham paints that I use. <laughs> While these ones aren't bad, they just somehow don't seem quite as nice as the M. Graham paints that I use. I will, I will use these uh, Holbein paints again. I know I will. They certainly aren't bad at all. They're better than most. I'm just saying that to uh, basically remind myself how nice those M. Graham paints are and how pigmented they really are. All right, there's our drive mechanism, our steering mechanism, I guess. All right, mixing up a little bit of this Prussian blue and black. It's almost the same as the uh, the interior, the metal color, the spokes of that rim, but mixed a little bit darker, trying to put a bit of a shadow on the bottom of this wheel and the big wheel. If the back wheel has a bit of shadow on it, the front wheel ought to be have a little bit of shadow on it also. Probably that whole side of it ought to be in shadow, but um, I don't know that that would be fun just to cover up all that wateriness on that wheel. That's kind of the one of the fun things of this painting is all that watercolory goodness on the top of that wheel. I don't want to take too much of that away. And a bit of the metal color right there. So as I'm coming down to the end of this painting, let me remind everybody that I do do Instagram and Twitter. I post there more things than I do videos for. So there are links down below for those. Uh, I have my own webpage, watercolorswithmichael.com. I've got a lot of stuff there. I'm building more every week. Please check that out. Sign up to uh, get on the mailing list for uh, our blog or for my blog that I have there. Uh, what else do I have on the website? I have links to my Etsy store. I think I have links to my Etsy store down below. I've got a few things up for sale. I believe that this green machine at the time of uh, recording this is still for sale. I have not sold it yet. If you're interested in that, I've got links on my webpage for ways to support me. Uh, you can buy me a cup of coffee if you'd like, or you can buy me some beer to keep me going. Uh, all of the funds collected through the coffee fund or the beer fund go to the Studio General Fund to keep me going and keep me in art supplies, keep me bringing you videos like this and producing artwork for Instagram and Twitter. Um, there's the reference photo. There is the big wheel I've come up with. I've got a little bit left to do on the bottom of that pedal, it looks like. I'm going to get to that, I'm sure. I'm just going to let it dry a little bit. <clears throat> Always quality video. <laughs> Try to blow on the painting to get it to dry quickly. That always makes it fun. <laughs> Stuff happens, you know. You got to roll with it. There we go. Really dark underneath there, really dark. That whole bottom is in shadow. I want that to be darker than the plastic around it. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. With that, I'm going to sign it and call it good. Thank you all for stopping by the studio this evening. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.